Okay, it's 3.30. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. My name's Alex Baddock. I'm with Amtech Company. I apologize for my voice up front. I lost my voice the other night. Uh, you can plan a webinar, but you really can't plan if your voice is going to go away. So just stay with me here. Uh, what I want to do is demonstrate to you how a laser system works. We're going to go through the types of materials that a, a laser system like this can work with. Different laser systems and different power levels, what that all means, what you might need, depending on what you want to do with this type of system. How the material database in the system's driver works, the different types of design software that you can use with a laser system, and then get to some tips and tricks for different materials uh, and different types of applications. So a laser system really is a simple device to use. They, they work via USB connected to a computer and they can work with really any design software. The types of materials that you can use, and I'm gonna switch over to the, the video here, um, so you can see, I hope you can see that reasonably well. So we have paper, acrylic, rubber, wood, glass, plastic, leather, stainless steel, painted metal, marble, and anodized aluminum. So a wide variety, and there's, there's more materials than that that you can process. Anywhere that you see the word cut is a material that you can cut through obviously and anything else you can mark on but you can't cut through the rule of thumb there is if you can melt it with a lighter you can cut through it uh, anything else you can you can at least mark on now some materials you need a marking compound for instance this stainless steel with the standard optics that come in one of these lasers the stainless steel will not show any result but if you apply a marking compound up front you can see the result of the laser very clearly after there is actually a, a special lens you can get that has a very high resolution and it also has a very small spot size so what that means is all of the power is going into a smaller spot so you can use the same amount of power in a smaller spot so you can get that spot a little hotter and those special optics allow you to mark on materials like stainless steel without a marking compound. So there's a number of ways to get to the result you're looking for. It just depends on how often you're doing it. So for instance, if you told me you wanted to cut or work with stainless steel every day, then it would make more sense to get those specialized optics. But if it's something you're going to do every once in a while, you may as well just stick with the standard optics and, and, uh, just do the, the stainless steel with the marking compound. Uh, some of the applications, so a little bit further over here, maybe it makes more sense to actually move the material, try to get this a little closer. So we have a lot of people doing things like architectural modeling. You can do an, a 3D process. This is actually a little bit difficult to see, but it actually has some three-dimensional features there. And the way that that's achieved is by providing a grayscale image. And what the laser driver does is it converts the darker pixels to a, a higher power and therefore can create depth. This process here, this is an, a wood inlay. So you're using, say, mother of pearl and you're cutting that out and then uh, laying it on top of an engraved piece of wood. We have denim and two layer twill. So the denim uh, pretty much reacts like bleaching it. So you can control where it's bleached away and, and uh, put designs into it. And the two layer twill is a interesting material this is another example right here where you're actually you have two pieces of material that have a sticky backing on top of each other the driver allows you to s select different powers to cut through one or both layers so you can cut out different layers and weed them out and then peel off the sticky backing and stick it onto fabrics or other pieces of material we have a uh, microfiber heat press flock. Of course, signage is very popular. Uh, some of the signage, you'll, you'll see there's Braille, so there are some application tip sheets for, for that. And then we have the more 
common uh, industrial marking and images as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are some of the general materials. There's, of course, a lot more materials. We'll get into that a little bit later, but that gives you an idea of the different types of materials. Uh, I'm going to switch over to another camera here so I can show you just a couple more applications. So if, you, if you're doing graphics or photography, there's actually special software called the OneTouch Photo software that converts photographs to grayscale images and it changes the dot pattern based on the material that you're selecting. So it optimizes the image to work on different materials. So this is on a, a piece of granite. You can see there's, there's very high resolution detail. This is using those, those specialized optics I referred to before because it has a very high resolution. And then this is an image on a piece of wood. So you can put graphics or, or full images onto different materials and you can also put them on cylindrical materials. So this is a water bottle, and this is put into the rotary fixture and rotated, and the laser removes it so it's an anodized aluminum and removes the, the paint basically from the, the water bottle so you can customize things like that. So we have a lot of schools that are using these not only for engineering and for art, but also for a lot of fundraising. And if you've noticed the guitar in the background here, I actually made that. I designed, well, you can see it's a Stratocaster design if you know guitars, but I found a blueprint of it online, drew it up in SolidWorks. The, these pieces are all 3D printed. The blue pieces actually on the inside, you can see the white from the 3D printed. But what I did so you could see inside was I laser cut all this acrylic so that you could tell it was a guitar that you hadn't probably seen before. So. Sometimes you're doing projects completely on the laser cutter. Other times you are utilizing multiple technologies together to produce the design or the end result you're looking for. So I want to get into now how these things work. I'm going to go back to my screen here. So the way the process works is we, we use a graphics software. Now that can be a CAD program, that could be AutoCAD, that could be SolidWorks, that could be Inventor, or it could be something like CorelDRAW, as you see on my screen here, or Adobe Illustrator. Pretty much any graphics software works. The key is that you need a graphics software that when you press the print button, it supplies a vector output as opposed to rasterizing the output. So what I mean by that is a program like Illustrator or CorelDRAW, when I draw a rectangle like this, when I output it, it's actually outputting this vector rectangle, whereas something like Photoshop will rasterize this output. It will turn it to a bunch of dots or pixels. The laser, in order to cut things, needs vector output. So that's the key. And of course, if you're interested in, in this type of system and you have some software questions, we can go over that later. But the, the thing to remember is almost any software will work, but there may be some more steps with other softwares that, that, that don't work perfectly with the system. CorelDRAW doesn't have any of those issues. It works perfectly out of the box. And one of the reasons I like CorelDRAW or Illustrator is it's very simple to teach somebody how to use this type of software, even if they have no experience. So for instance, if you wanted to output from CAD, that's great. I do that all the time. The downside is you have to know CAD, and that, of course, can be a semester or more's worth of learning in order to, to get good enough at it to, to design parts. If you want to get students up and using this type of system in a couple of hours or even less, something like Illustrator or Corel, you can teach someone how to draw shapes and change colors and line thickness, thicknesses very easily. So it's at least ideal to have a software package like that on the computer you're using, but most of the time you have multiple. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, is just a very simple project. It's just going to be a little luggage tag, tag I cut out of acrylic. So I've drawn the first box here, and we don't need to be too picky with exact measurements, but I'll make it 2.5 by 2, or actually maybe I'll make it 2.5 by 1.5. Now I'm going to copy that and paste it and scale this one down a little bit smaller. So now I have two outlines, and I'm just gonna put my name here. 
I can scale that up a little bit if I want. And then if I highlight all of them and press the letter C and E, um, I'm just aligning them so it's perfectly centered. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, if you're gonna have a luggage tag, you gotta have a hole in it, so I'll put the circle there. So we have all of the geometry we want. Of course, sharp edges aren't very nice, so we're gonna click on this and make those edges a little rounded. The only issue here is how does the laser know what to do with any of this? I know looking at it that I wanna cut this outline, I wanna cut that circle, I wanna etch this. I don't wanna cut through, but I wanna show it on the, the material, and I want to engrave this, so I wanna fill that in. So those are really three different processes. Those are the three main processes that a laser system uses. So in order to tell this laser system to cut, by default, all I need to do is change the lines that I want to cut to red. So I'm gonna right click on red, To tell something to etch, I'm gonna make them blue. So I got blue there. Now, there's also the line thickness. You have to make the line thickness in CorelDRAW hairline and other software 0 0.01 point. Otherwise, it sees a thickness to that line. Now, that didn't really look like much, but if I zoom in and I switch between 0.5 point, you can see very clearly that it is changing. So what happens is if I send to the laser, uh, a line that has a thickness, it thinks it's something it needs to fill as opposed to trace. So it converts it to black because black is the default color to fill. So those are really the, the couple of things you need to keep in mind. We're using RGB values here, so it has to be RGB true red, as you can see, 25500 RGB true blue. So if that's off, it's also not gonna work quite right. So once you have your template set up, you can just open it every time and you don't have to think about it. So from here, I go to File, Print, and this is really the power of the driver that the Universal Systems have. So it is set up on the computer just like it's a printer. So I'm selecting my laser system instead of selecting a different printer. When I go to Preferences, this is where we open the material database, and this is where a lot of time savings come in, into play where in previous years and from other manufacturers, you actually have to do a lot of work at this point. So in the background, what's happening, when I select plastic and acrylic and then continuous cast acrylic, it's very simple. I just need to know the material I want and then type in the thickness. But in the background, what's actually happening is it's changing the power and the speed and the pulses per inch for each of these processes. So in this case, we're using black, we're using red, and we're using blue. But as you can see, in this manual control, we have five additional colors that we can work with. Now that's useful if you say wanted to do two different engraving depths. So if that were the case, I could create another profile. I could clone the black profile to green, but then add maybe 20% more power. And the result would be, I'd go a little bit deeper. So where I had black text, I'd have one depth. And where I had green text, I'd have a second depth. So we might get into a little bit of that later if we have time. I'm trying to keep this to about 30 minutes. So uh, right here, I have the continuous cast acrylic, but it'd be just as easy for me to select something like wood and medium density wood. Uh, you can see there's a couple of options here. And then there's other materials. Pretty much every material that you would want to cut is in this database foam core, so architectural modeling, lots of different fabrics are here. So this database is extensive and it is the result of Universal's application engineers spending hundreds and hundreds of hours tweaking the settings for these materials so that it's available to the user. And what that means to schools, and that's, that's from the middle school level up to the university level, is the learning curve is completely, it's not eliminated, there's still something to learn, but it's, it's greatly reduced over years past and, and what the learning curve is from other manufacturers. So it's very, once, you, once you've used this, if you use a driver that doesn't have this feature, it just takes twice as long or, or longer. So again, I'm just gonna go to plastic, continuous cast acrylic. I, I know my thickness because I bought the acrylic, but what you really should be doing is you should have a, a set of calipers at your laser and measure the thickness because this changes the power level and the focus. So I hit apply and okay, and I hit print. 
but instead of like a normal printer, it doesn't start right away. It actually prints to the control panel. So that's this little button here, or you can access it on the desktop. So you can see my graphic is right here. And if I switch over to my camera, my other camera, you can see I've got some holes in the part already. I'm gonna move this camera over just a little bit so you can see a little better. So I don't wanna necessarily put this exactly where I have it in the software because I might cut through an area that has a hole already. So I can click on the graphic here and there's a little red dot. It's hard to see. I just lost the mic. Give me a second. Stepping on cords. I'm back. Okay, so you might see it, but on my finger there's a red dot. So that red dot allows me to know exactly where the laser is going to start. So I can position the red dot in a way that I know is not going to hit uh, a hole in the material. So I'm gonna move that up until that red dot is just below that, that hole. And just to show you what's happening here, I'm gonna switch back to my, my screen so you can see. So on my screen, you see this blue target. That's exactly where that red dot is right now. But you see my graphic is not where that blue dot is. So all I need to do is use this relocate tool and I'm gonna move the top left corner so you can see the whichever corner I wanna highlight, I can click on and it turns blue. I'm gonna move the top left corner to the pointer. Now my graphic is in the location or it's gonna start exactly where, where that red dot is. So let me switch you back over to the camera. So the other thing I can do here is I can select the extremes of the part. And I know this is difficult to see that red dot with the camera, but the red dot is right here now, and I can click on the bottom right corner. So I'm clicking on the extremes of the part and moving it and verifying that the graphic is not going to run over any section of the acrylic that has already been cut. That's a very useful thing when you have material that has a lot of holes in it. Otherwise, you're guessing at it. You're going to waste a lot of material. So at this point, it's very simple. Now, there is a fume extraction cart that I need to go turn on here that sucks out the fumes while it's running. So I'm going to turn that on. And then you can see, well, can't see it right now, but on my screen, there's a big green play button. I'm just going to press that button. Now I'm going to switch over to my other camera to hopefully give you a better view of what's going on. Hopefully no one's getting dizzy. So you can see the, the letters are coming out now. It always rasters first, then it will etch, and then after that it's going to cut. So this is the etching process. You can see it's tracing that blue line, but it's not applying full power. It's not going all the way through. Now we're cutting. You'll see those flashes. That's actually the laser making it all the way through the material and reflecting off the honeycomb table below. That honeycomb table lets air pass down through it so that it can be evacuated by the fume extraction system. So all of that flashing is normal and it doesn't hurt anything. So the part's done. You see how quickly that was done. And now all I need to do is grab the part. And there it is. So just a very simple part, but you can see how quick it is to make anything in this machine. Now, we, of course, don't just sell laser cutters. We sell 3D printers, CNC machines, all sorts of fabrication devices. What I like the most about laser cutters are the fact that A, you don't have any proprietary materials. B, they're very quick. So if you have students that need to get projects done or 
you you have a lot of students in your class. They're they're a great device to allow your students to to output, but they're not gonna take three weeks to get everybody done. So it's a it's a very very cool device. So let's switch back over to the screen. So what happens if you have a material that isn't exactly what's in the database? That comes up all the time. Uh, I would say the biggest material that I see that with is cardboard. Everyone says, why isn't cardboard in the database? And the reason for that is if you ever look at one piece of cardboard versus another, there's pretty much zero consistency. You can get all sorts of different types of cardboard and that's why they can't just put a profile for it in there. So what you can do is you can determine the power settings you need for cardboard. <coughs> Excuse me again. And we can create a profile for it. So if you have a bunch of the same type of cardboard, you can determine what you need to do to cut it properly and then save that to your driver. So your students don't need to do that every time they can just select whatever you call that type of cardboard. If you have that in, in your classroom or in your lab, you can put stack that in one area and, and give it a name and, and then they can select that from the database. So I'm going to show you what I do to figure out the power settings I need to cut out of material. Now I don't have cardboard with me, but I do have some wood and plywood is similar to cardboard in the sense that you never really know what you're going to get. <laughs> Can't shake this cold, but Using the material, the manual driver allows you to very quickly determine the power settings you need, and then you can just save that to a material. So what I do, and let me see, I've, I'm trying to do this cooking show style here just so that you don't have to sit me, watch me draw everything. Uh, here it is. So I talked about it previously that you can use, you can use up to 20, or 20, uh, you can use up to eight different colors. The three main colors when you're using the material database are black, red, and blue, but we also have green, yellow, cyan, magenta, and orange that we can use as well. So if I know a, an approximate value that I think might cut the material, then I can create or clone that to all of the other colors and then tweak one variable. So maybe I will increase or power by a little bit or decrease speed by a little bit in order to test each color and determine which one cuts out the best. So all I've done here is I've created these eight squares that are all half inch by half inch and I've made them the same colors that we have in the driver. So I'm going to go to file and print and I'm going to go to preferences. And if I selected a material here, so, so I know I have a, a wood for instance. So I'll select wood and it's, it's a reasonably thick plywood. So I'm going to select general plywoods. Now, actually I'll, to make it a little harder, I'm going to select the medium wood. So when I select that, I know the red profile is the cut profile always. So I, I want to determine what I need to do to cut through this material. So I'm going to select red and then I'm going to select the rest of them. I didn't really need to do it in that order, but I did. So I'll change this to 24 and change this to 300 and change this mode to vector. And when I hit set, it's going to clone all of the other profiles to match the red profile. That's not exactly what I want to do though, because if I do that, all it's going to do is cut out eight of the exact same thing. I want to test and see is 24% speed what I need. So how do we do that? Pretty simple. I'm going to change this to say 30. Then I'll change this to 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and then I'm just going to go just in case 4, 3. So I'm doing the exact same thing with every single profile, but I'm altering the speed. Hit apply, okay. 
and print. So in my driver now, I just see a bunch of squares. So all I need to do now is put the wood I'm testing into the machine and run it. So I'm gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna switch over to the, the view. So I, this is my acrylic I'm gonna take out. And I have a piece of wood here. I'm gonna measure this. Now if you're looking at that nasty looking cutting table, that over time, that just is from the smoke going down. That, that's no issue. So we have point one two five. Wait, point two zero five. I mean, I guess I'm sick in every way. So I have that up there. Now you're really going to be able to see a lot easier now this red dot. So there's the red dot. Of course, I just ran into that hole. So I'm going to move it over just a little bit until it appears. So there it is. And I'm going to relocate my graphic now to that pointer. So I know I'm not going to run into any issues. I'm going to close the top. I'm going to go turn on my fume extractor. And I'm going to run it. But one thing actually I didn't do was change the, the thickness. I, did, I need to type that in real quick, 205. Uh, so bear with me one second because I have to do change something real quick I forgot to do. Okay, so I'm running this. The table just dropped a little bit. So this is at our 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and that you can see that one dropped, right? I can see it at least. 5, 4, And three. So of course, once you get to the one that the first one that cuts through, you know the rest will. So now that that's done, I pull this out and I can see. Okay. Well, we had. I can put this back down here so you can see it. We had 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. 10 actually kind of popped through up with a little bit of force. Five just fell right out. So now all I need to do, I'm going to do this exact same thing again, but I'm going to change the numbers. So 10, 10 was maybe needed a little bit more power. So we're going to start at nine this time. So I'll switch you back over to my screen so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go back into settings and all I'm going to do is say, we knew 10 was maybe a little, needed a little more power. So we'll start at nine, eight, seven, six, five. And of course we did five already. So the rest of these, I'll click on them and I'm just gonna go to skip. So we don't have to do any of those. I'll hit okay. Now I need to move this down a little bit, otherwise I'll cut the same hole. I can just grab it and move it down. And then I'll switch you over to my video. And hit play. So that's nine, eight, seven, and six. Okay. And it skipped the rest, nice and easy. Open this up. And the two that really came out easily were we had nine, eight, seven was the first one to release. Now we could take this further and further because you can go down to. You could go 7.9, 7.8 if you want to, but you, you get, the, get the idea here. That's all we do, and you can, I don't know if you can see this, but 
some of these, the you get a little different in the the finish here. So I like this nice kind of it's almost a nice amber color when you get it right. Otherwise, it looks a little burnt. It, you know, most people just want the shape, but sometimes you want a nice finish here. So you can play with that to get the nice clean finish that you're looking for. And a lot of this type of debris with wood will, will wipe off as well. So what do we do with those numbers once we have them? So we... We know that we picked seven percent. So I can now go to print to open this driver. And in the material database, I could go and add a new material. So I'd go down to wood, I'd go to medium wood, right click and hit new material. And I could type in the name, um, whatever I want. And I have it in the medium wood category. Now over here, I could say 300, the power level was seven, or the power level was 100%, speed was 7%, and the default thickness will just make it what I had, 205, apply and close, and now I have my plywood here. You, notice, you can notice if I go in, um, go in here, I can do the same thing with that blue, so if I want to get different types of lines, the different engravings. So you're doing the exact same process with, with those different processes there. And once you have this in your database, this can be used. So if you've got a bunch of that type of wood in your shop, in your lab, in your class, you can create a profile for it. And now your students just need to grab that material and pop it in the machine, click it, and, and they're off. So that's a little more work up front. It's a little more advanced. Most people don't necessarily get to that right away. But if you do have that issue where a material you want to cut isn't quite in there, you can see right there, it really doesn't take too long to figure it out and to pop it in your database for use. So it's a very po powerful thing once, once you take advantage of what this driver has to offer and it makes cutting things uh, very, very easy. So we've reached four o'clock. If I'm going to actually ask a question here. Let's see if this works. I want to know how many people that are here actually have a laser. So I'm going to launch that and see if anybody already is using a laser, doesn't have a laser. See if anyone. Has. So a couple people have a universal. So, so hopefully that, that second part of this was useful for you. A lot of people have a universal already. So uh, that's, that's cool. I hope that was useful for you and we're always interested in what, what people want to do. So if we, if we have idea, if you have ideas of what you'd like to see, we can certainly cater another one of these around a specific, a specific process. So thank you all for, for voting there. It looks like somebody raised their hand. So let's see. Does anybody else have any questions? All right, well, if, if nobody has any questions, I think whoever raised their hand must have meant to try to leave. Then we're gonna finish this up. I appreciate everybody coming and actually, somebody, somebody did ask if we had the one touch prior, but it got lost by IT. Can we get another? Yes, you can. We just need to know the name of your school and we can go to Universal and get them to get that license information. And if it's, if it's still on a computer, they can disable it so you can reinstall it. So just, I'll see if I can email you afterwards so we can work that out. Does anybody else have any questions. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. I hope you found that useful. And if we have uh, any other webinars, we'll keep you posted. And of course, we've done these for 3D printing. This is our first for the laser. We might do a 3D scanning webinar at some point. Uh, we have the Roland print cut systems. And there's going to be a new 3D printer coming out in the next couple of weeks that I think if you are doing 3D printing or interested in it, you, you'll definitely want to keep your uh, 
eyes out for that webinar because it's going to be a very cool machine. Somebody else just asked, actually, before we close up here, uh, how much is the one touch? It's about, I think it's something like 285 bucks, and you get two licenses with that. So, all right. Well, thank you all for coming, and uh, I'll follow up afterwards. If you all have individual questions, I'd be happy to answer or uh, give you some other advice. So, thanks again.